name is Stephanie, and I'm so glad you decided to join us on YouTube today. We have an exciting message for you today, so make sure that you're engaged, leaned in, and taking notes. Also, be sure to like and share this video, and if you haven't yet, be sure to turn on notifications and subscribe so you can stay up to date with everything happening on our YouTube channel. Now let's jump into the sermon. Going to be, it's going to be a little tough today, but it's going to be very practical and uh, if you'll take it to heart, I think it will help you. It's the application of the knowledge that brings transformation to your life. So until you apply it, it's not going to help you. So I want to encourage you today to just let the guard, guard down a little bit. Receive this word today. Let the Holy Spirit do his work in your life. So if you have your Bibles this morning, I want you to go to the book of Acts, Acts uh, chapter 13. I will be there in just a moment. But today we continue our series called One. I want everybody to say one. One. My prayer for this series is that God will give you one scripture that will lead to one song or one word for your new year. Don't give in to the temptation of trying to fix many things because oftentimes if we're fixated on many things, we miss the one thing that God really wants to do in our life. I believe this year that God is giving you a word for this year. God's giving you a scripture for this year and it's going to be it's going to be the light at the end of the tunnel. It's going to be the anchor for your life. It's going to be the word that's going to push or pull you through as you travel through this new year. We have uh, unpacked a lot of different subjects. And again, I really don't know where this is going to end. It's kind of like, you know, you're, you're in a river and you're just going down and, and you're just, we're just in a canoe and we're just going to go until the Lord is done with this series. But today I want to talk to you about a word that we, a subject, that we need to talk about in the church, that we need to uh, spend more time thinking about and praying about, it is the word offended. Uh, I'm here to tell you, if you are breathing, you will be offended. So I want everyone in the room, everyone watching in another room, I want you to look at me this morning. You are not special. <laughs> How's that for an encouraging word today? What I mean by that is, if you are breathing, you will be offended. I'm going to give you some scripture here in a moment for that. It, look around. It feels and seems as if everyone is offended about everything with the exception of sin. And not only is sin no longer condemned, it is celebrated today. And so if you want to really get offended, then get, get offended in the right way and get offended with the craziness that's going on in this world today and everything that that's feels like they're just trying to like cram it down our throats today as Christ follows. If you're going to get offended, get offended about the right things. But we, we've got to get less sensitive if we're going to make it in this world, I want you to know this hypersensitivity that's going on in our world today. I've never seen anything like it. You can't say anything. You can't do anything. You can't make fun of anything. You've got to be careful how you laugh because how you laugh, somebody's going to take that wrong and be offended. I think mean, what is happening in our world? We can't make fun of each other. One, it's not a lot of fun. If you can't make fun of, of people, I mean, it's okay. People, my friends make fun of me. It doesn't bother me. I make fun of them. It, it should, but we just live in this hypersensitive world today where you just can't really do or say anything. Well, I want you to know it's not anything new. Jesus prophesied about the last days in Matthew chapter 24, verse 10. He says, I'm going to give you a couple of Greek words this morning for this word offense that I hope that you'll put in your backpack and take home with you this morning. It says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 10 says, and then talking about the end days, the end times, many will be offended. The Greek word for offended here is the word scandalizio. Okay? It means to put a stumbling block in someone's way, causing them to trip. It also means to cause distrust. Jesus goes on to say, and then people will betray one another. You bear witness to that. And people will hate each other. I mean, have you ever lived in such a time in which it just feels like everybody hates everybody? I mean, if you want to get offended, get offended at our news media today because that's all they do anymore is spread hate and division in our world. You ever feel like you're just walking on eggshells? You just feel like you can't say 
or do anything because you are afraid you are going to offend someone again in this hypersensitive society today. So again, that word offend there means to trip somebody up, causing them to cause distrust. Again, listen to the words of Jesus in Luke chapter 17 and verse 1. He says, it is impossible, everybody say, it is impossible, that no offenses should come. So I'm going to tell you again, I didn't say it, Jesus said it, you're not special, Meaning that you are not the only one that's going to be offended. You, if you're breathing, you are going to be offended. And get this, most likely, you're going to be offended every day. Listen, you can't leave your home and not be offended. You can't walk your dog and not be offended. You can't go to work and not be offended. You certainly cannot drive in Northwest Arkansas and not be big time offended. You just cannot do it. So we're going to be offended. We've got to get over this stuff. The Greek word for offenses, by the way, here is the word scandalon. That's where we get the English word scandal. The the, the word originally referred to the part of a trap to which the bait was attached. So in the New Testament writings, it often describes an entrapment used by the enemy. Now, did you catch that? The devil uses an offense as a trap to entrap you, meaning that when you, someone says or does something that offends you, he's literally setting a trap for you. And, and, and here's the problem with that. Sometimes is we, we will spend our entire lives in that same trap entrapped by something that was said or done to us maybe a long time ago, but we are still trapped by something that offended us long time ago. Now watch this. The trap is for the offended, not the offender. The trap is always set for the offended, The devil knows. Again, he knows what's going to offend you. And listen, if you're looking to be offended, you don't have to look very far today. It's not if, but when we get offended, how will we respond? So I don't have any control over people offending me, but I do have control over how I'm going to respond when somebody offends me. Now, I want you to know today, again, I'm not making light of this, but all of us are going to get offended. All of us will be offended, and we're going to multiple times in a day to be offended. So if we're going to do it, if it's going to happen all the time, wouldn't it be great if we knew how to deal with it a little bit better? Wouldn't it be better to deal with it than carry it for the rest of our life? Talk about it? Yeah, getting offended is not a choice, but how we respond is. There's a great story found in the book of Acts that can help us, not if, but when we're offended. I'm going to give you the backdrop to this because this is... It's one of the great stories. It's kind of a hidden gem in the New Testament. I want to unpack this for you. I'm going to give you a little backdrop because the backdrop is going to provide context today for what we're going to be speaking about. The Apostle Paul chose Barnabas and his cousin, John Mark, to travel with him on his first missionary journey. So Paul went on three missionary journeys. This was his first missionary journey, so he picks his team to go with him. And they went to different cities ministering. They were having great success. But Paul decided, I'm going to sail to the city of Perga. Scripture says that John Mark, whom he picked, deserted him. That word deserted is important, meaning he did not give a two weeks notice. I mean, he just like did not show up one day to work. I know you don't know anyone like that. And Paul was upset. He was hurt and even offended that his own family would leave without explanation, and without warning. Now, I'm going to finish this story out today, but this was the first missionary journey. And the reason I emphasize that, because again, the Apostle Paul went on three missionary journeys, and you're going to find eventually Paul is going to deal with this offense, but he waits until the end to deal with it, meaning he carried this offense for the rest of the first journey, all of the second and third journeys of his missionary trips, he took this offense with him. So, not if, but when you are offended. If the Apostle Paul was offended because John Mark deserted him, 
Rest assured, you are going to be offended. So when you are, I want you to remember three things. Are you ready? They're going to be in your notes this morning. Number one, don't take it personal. People say that to me, and it just makes me mad. You know, it's just like, don't take this personal. Well, when, when the conversation starts with, don't take this personal, how many of you know it's not off to a good start? You know, don't take this personal. This is easy said, harder done. This is a difficult thing to do, but if you're going to reach a point of maturity in your faith where you're no longer offended by everything and everyone, you've got to reach a point where you don't take things there you go. Acts chapter 13, verse 13. It says, at the end of that, it says that John Mark left them and returned to Jerusalem. He left. He left in the middle of the night. He left without saying goodbye. He left. Now, think about this. How could Paul not take this personal? After all, John Mark was family. Paul chose him, took him under his wing, personally invested in him, and now he just walks away. How many of you know, as a leader of an organization, a leader of your family, everybody can quit and walk away but you? So, John Mark could walk away, but the Apostle Paul could not. One commentary said, Mark's nerve failed him, and he turned back. Now, if I had time to really get into the historical piece of this, what was about to take place where, where Paul was about to go was a very dangerous place. It was a dangerous path known for robbers and thieves. And, and that's the reason the commentaries say that John Mark just lost his nerve. Meaning, he said, it's a lot safer for me to go back to Jerusalem than to stay with the Apostle Paul. It seemed when the tough was about to get going, John Mark was the one who got going. The biblical commentary on this passage says the issue was with John Mark, not the Apostle Paul. Yet Paul took it personally. Now, let me help you. People are flawed. Let the shock settle in. <laughs> People are flawed. Just, we're messed up. People are going to hurt you. People are going to disappoint you. People are going to let you down, and people are going to offend you. That is life. So stop crying about that, and stop trying to make us all have sympathy for you because someone offended you. It happens to everyone all of the time. Not if, but when they do, you know what I say? Go to Lowe's, buy a ladder, and get over it. I love that saying. I have a warehouse full of ladders. They're all sizes and all colors of ladders. Because when I get offended, that's what I do. I just go to Lowe's, buy a, buy a ladder. Get over it. I'm, I'm trying to help you. We have to reach a point of maturity in which we stop taking everything so personal. Let's turn the tide in our soft and sensitive society today. If we get offended about everything and everyone, sooner or later, we're going to run out of friends and places to go. If you don't learn to make it right, if you don't learn to settle the score, if you don't love it, says, as my mom used to say, we got to get this under the blood. We got, we got to get this thing under, we got to get this thing taken. If you get offended by someone and you don't make it right, sooner or later, you're going to run out of friends. People get offended all the time and they leave churches. It's, it's hysterical to me. Some of it is. Because I think you're leaving because you got offended? What are you going to do when you go to the next church and you get offended? Are you going to leave? And if you do that, sooner or later, you're going to run out of churches in northwest Arkansas. If you leave a friend every time that friend offends you, guess what? Sooner or later, you're going to run out of friends. Lord, Christy and I have been married for three months. If I left every time she offended me, I'd been gone a long time ago. <laughs> we just got to learn. That's going to cost me something today. I'm not sure why. <laughs> here's, the, here's the principle for you. Here, here's a great principle. Separate the person from the problem. 
If you, this is just good practical stuff today. If you want to get to the point that you're not taking everything personal, separate the person from the problem. That's what it is. It's not your kid. It's that devil in that kid. I get it. It's hard not to take it personal. But be intentional by, my, by not being so easily offended about everything. I want you to hear my heart today. Guys, listen. This is on us as Christ followers. We have a responsibility to lead the way and set the example. We need to live our lives in a way that we're not offended by everything and everybody. When you take it personally, you're the person who gets hurt the most. It's you. The Apostle Paul carried this offense with him. Not only on the rest of this journey, but the other two missionary journeys as well. He carried that thing with him. Number two. So number one, don't take it personal. How do I do that? I separate the person from the problem. I did that with Nathan. I still do that with Nathan when he does something dumb. (laughs) Look, son, I love you. I don't like what you did. You see how you separate the two. And we have to be that way with people. Love the person doesn't mean you have to like the problem that they caused. Number two, keep it to yourself. Ooh, the holy hush came over the building as Pastor Joe went to point number two. <laughs> Acts chapter 15, verse 37 says, Barnabas agreed and wanted to take John Mark to go, he wanted to take him with him to, to go to Alma. But Paul disagreed strongly since John Mark had deserted them. Watch this. And not continue to do the work. 39 says their disagreement was so sharp. What's this? That they separated. I read that and thought, Paul, man, you you blister us all the time with your writings. You could have let the lot of stuff out. And here you are, the apostle Paul, and this disagreement, this offense, caused a separation in ministry partners. Disagreement was so sharp, Barnabas took John Mark with him and sailed for Cyprus. After the breakup, Paul teams up with Silas and Barnabas, uh, and Barnabas chose John Mark, and they, they both, they went their separate ways after the separation. We don't read much more in Scripture from this point forward about Barnabas and John Mark, but we read a lot about Paul and Silas. They went on to do some great things include, on their second missionary journey, including the story that we talked about last week. In the midnight hour, they were praising and giving glory to God, and the doors came open and the chains fell off. All of that happened after this split. But here's my point. Keep it to yourself because when shared with others, it will affect others. When you share your offense with other people, it's going to affect them. It's going to affect how they perceive that other person, that other problem, because you're always going to tell it, even with a good heart, you're always going to tell it from your perspective. You're never going to share both sides of the story. It's just, it's almost impossible to do that. So when you get upset, you scream, you share it with all of your faithful followers on social media, but it will come at a cost to you and it will come a cost to them. The reason I'm bringing this out, because this is important. Because sometimes you are able to get over the offense. And you forgive, you forget, you move on. But the person that you shared that with, they're not able to get over it as quickly as you did. And now all of a sudden, they're carrying your offense and the trap that the enemy set for you. At times, you will get free of that trap. But oftentimes, you leave those closest to you in the same trap that entrapped you because you decided, I've got to share this with other people. And there was another holy hush over the people as Pastor Joe continued to (laughs) preach the gospel. Our attitude, good or bad, is contagious. What we share and post will only be shared and posted over and over again. Sharing our offense often leads to distraction and division. Even if you are right, sharing the offense is wrong. Even if you are right about the offense... Sharing it is wrong and only makes it worse. Not only are they offended, are you offended, but others are offended as well. Don't let the offense that tripped you up trip others up as well. The devil, guys, he always wins here because it's just, it's like the offense that just keeps on giving. Not only did this offense trap you, not only did it entrap you, but now it's got someone else in the same trap because you decided it's important that I share this offense with all of my friends or all of my family. Not only does it have you in an emotional 
and a spiritual trap, he uses you to trap others as well. What started out as an issue with Paul and John Mark led to an issue with Paul and Barnabas. Don't allow an offense between you and someone else to cause a new offense between them and someone else. When, not if, when we are offended, watch this, we're either going to share it or we're going to stop it. I said not if, but when we are offended, we're either going to share it or we're going to stop it. I said let the offense stop here. Let it stop with me. Because when I share my offense, not only am I hurt, but I'm now projecting that hurt onto someone else. So don't let what hurt you hurt someone else. As Christ followers, we have a responsibility to not let what tripped and trapped us to trip and trap others. Romans chapter 14, verse 13. Here's a word for us today. So let's stop condemning each other. Decide instead to live in such a way that you will not cause another believer to stumble and fall. Again, these offenses are set as a trap. It was one of our Greek words, as, as a trap. Another word, it means to cause someone else to stumble. When we share our offenses with other people, at times it can cause someone else to stumble. Now, I don't know about you. I stumble enough on my own. I don't need anybody helping me stumble more because of the offense they want to share with me. Come on, are you guys with me today? Is this helping anybody today? So live your life in such a way that you're not going to become a stumbling block to other people. Number three, this one's about to get really tough. Y'all ready? Make it right. Fast forward in our story. Paul is now an old man. He's coming to the end of his life. He is in prison, and he's writing a letter to his young protege, Timothy, when he says this. Very famous verse that we quote a lot. He says, I have fought the good fight. He says, I have finished the race. And he says, I have kept the faith. He goes on to say in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 11, he says, I want you to bring Mark with you when you come because he will be helpful for me in our ministry. And watch this. Paul really could not say, I have finished my course until he first settled his unfinished business with John Mark. He could not say, I have finished until he settled his unfinished business with John Mark. Paul refused to die with what he had been living with for years. Paul waited until he was almost done, until he was almost dead before he made it right. Life is short. Don't wait until the end because we never know when the end is. The Bible tells us in Proverbs, do not make plans for tomorrow. Why? Because you don't know what tomorrow brings. We don't have control over tomorrow. So how many times have we say, you know, I know I need to make it right with my brother. I know I need to make it right with my I know I need to make it right with my friend or my coworker, uh, my parent, my, my mom, my dad, my dad. I know I need to make this offense right. And we just keep kicking the can down the road until we look up and it's literally months and years later and we're still carrying something that we should have buried a long time ago. And that's a decision each of us will make every time that we're offended. We're either going to carry this thing or we're going to, uh, or we're going to bury it. I say today is a great day to make a decision to stop carrying the offense and say today I'm going to bury this thing. I'm going to bury the hatchet. I'm going to move on with my life and I'm not going to carry this anymore. We got to make this thing right. We got to make it right. We, we just got to make it right. I want to go back and say something that I said in 830. I didn't say here. On that, or when we say things about affecting other people, you know who we hurt the most when we share our offense? It's with our family. If you have students that, that go to our uh, Northwest Youth on Wednesday night, you can't talk bad about Pastor John and Maya. And say negative things about them. And then expect your kids to be excited about going to youth. 
We, we can't talk negative, and I thank God that doesn't happen at Northwest Church. I sincerely mean that. But we can't talk negative about God and, and church at work and all the things that we don't like and all the things that we get offended by and then expect our friends and our families to get excited about serving Christ and about coming to the house of God. So we got to keep that stuff to ourselves. Some of it. I get it. There's times you got to go share it with somebody, a close friend. I understand that. But I'm talking about this public stuff where everybody, you're just spewing poison everywhere. Okay, it was, I got to get back to make it right. Paul waited till the end of his life to make it right. Don't wait until the end because the person who offended you will not always be here. We do not. Scripture says we don't have the promise of tomorrow. So how can we make it right? How can we make it right? Because some of you are going to leave here today. I believe this in my heart. You're going to leave here today, and you're going to make something right with somebody that offended you. It starts with, if you just have to share it. People say that to me all the time. Pastor, you don't understand. I have to share this with somebody. Okay? If you have to share it with somebody, share it with the somebody who offended you. That's good stuff. After all, it's what Jesus instructed us to do in Matthew chapter 18 and verse 15. He says, if another believer sins against you, watch this. He said, go privately and point out the offense. He did not say go public. He did not say get on Instagram. No, he didn't say put it on Facebook. He didn't say go tell everybody at work or copy a bunch of people on an email. He said, you go privately to the person who sinned against you, the person who offended you. You go and you make it right with him. You let them know. Because here's what I know. A lot of times, they don't even know they offended you. Now, sometimes they do. They're just jerks. <laughs> but most of the time, most people don't. I mean, they, they just don't. So here's a principle for you. You ready? I want you to write this down. Before you go public, you go private. Before you go public, you go private. Because if you will follow the steps that Jesus teaches us to make things right with our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, other Christ followers, there, there's other things, other steps to do if they, don't, if they won't receive it. There, there's, other, there's other steps to take. But the first step, I want you to watch this. This is always, so th this is an absolute, and there are very few of those. But this is, you always go to the person in private first. Always. Okay? Not only will it help yourself, it's going to help others. John Mark not only saw his relationship with the Apostle Paul made right, but most scholars believe that he went on to write the Gospel of Mark. Today, can you hear the voice of the Holy Spirit saying to you, you need to make this right. Is it time to forgive? Is it time to go to this person in private and make this right? Is it time to release the hurt? Is it time to release the offense? Is it, is it time to release the offender? Forgiveness and forgetfulness are not one and the same. A lot of times we think, in order to forgive, i got to forget the offense. No, you don't have to forget the offense. But we've got to get to a point where we get beyond the hurt when we remember it and the pain in which it causes us. Is it time to bury the hatchet? Do you need to make a call today to your child, to your parents, to a former boss or a friend and say, I want to make this right? Now, i got some extra time. I want to show you something. Can I give you all something that's going to really help you here? There's a profound difference in making it right and proving you are right. If the intent is to make it right, there can be no winners and no losers in that discussion. Because anytime someone walks away from a conflict and they feel like they lost in that conflict, I'm not sure it ever gets resolved. There cannot be winners and losers. I've been in this business long enough to know anytime there's conflict, about 99.9% .9 of the time, there's enough to go around for everybody. I'm talking about the blame. So my point is, if your intent is to make it right, then it doesn't matter what they say or don't say. It doesn't matter about their attitude. It doesn't matter if they say, I'm sorry, or don't say, I'm sorry. It does not matter if they ask you to forgive them or they don't. It doesn't matter if they own it and acknowledge it. It does not matter. It only hinges on you because your intent is, I want to make this right. 
You want to make it right. We as Christ followers, we have we live by a set of different rules than everybody else lives by. We have a responsibility and obligation to Scripture to make this thing right with each other. That's good preaching. Romans 12 and 18 says, Do all that you can to live at peace with everyone. Man, I wish he would have just put in there, Do all that you can to live at peace with normal people. You know, <laughs> not crazy people. Not people who offend me, all of this. He says everyone. That would include people that we like, dislike. That would include our friends, our enemies. That would include our family. That would include everybody we work with, everyone that we attend school with. Everyone includes even the people, watch this, who have offended us. It just means that we have a responsibility to live at peace with everyone. Luke chapter 23, verse 34 says, As he, referring to Jesus, Hung on the cross, looking at the very people who put him there, he prayed, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. Let me read this. I heard this guy last night. He was talking about a Hebrew word. He said, it's not Hebrew. This is Hebro. This is not Hebrew. This is he Joe. I would say, Lord, kill them. For they know exactly what they did. <clears throat> What's this? Jesus made it right with his father for the very people who put him on the cross. It's one thing to make it right with the father. But it's another thing to make it right for the people who offended you. That's hard stuff. I mean, I want you to think about that. Because a lot of times we think and feel, because we we do this Christianese thing. You know, we we, we have all this down where we're all spiritual. Well, I made it right with the Father. If it's not right with your brother or sister, it cannot be right with the Father. So Jesus, his prayer illustrates that it was right with the Father. Because if it's right with the Father, you're going to say, Lord, forgive them. You're going to pray for them, not for God to, for not to splatter them like a bug on a windshield. That's not the kind of prayer I'm talking about. You're, you're going to sincerely pray that God's going to heal them, that God's going to, to bless them, and you're going to pray that God would encourage them. So it's one thing to make it right with the Father, but it's another to make it right for others with the Father. That's what Jesus was doing. Not only was he making it right with the Father, He was making it right for the very people who put him on that cross. Don't live with or die with your offense. Make it right. Often the offender, or offended, that's me, is a bigger problem than the offense or the offender. Sometimes we, the offended, we make the offense much larger than what it really is. And we carry this stuff way too long. Dr. Henry Cloud said this, Forgiveness only takes one person, you. It only takes one person. Luke chapter 11, verse 4, known as the Lord's Prayer, says, And forgive us our sins, watch this, as we. So that, 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 that implies there's a process. So, Lord, forgive me. Father, forgive me of my sins as I forgive those who have sinned against me, as I have forgiven those who trespassed against me, as I have forgiven those who, what, have offended me. Now, if you're waiting until you feel like forgetting, forgiving, if you wait until you feel like to make it right, you're never going to forgive that person. And you're never going to make it right as long as you're basing it on your feelings. Because a lot of people is like, well, I'm too hurt. Well, there's only one way to get through that. And you've got to go sit down face to face with that affair. Don't wait until you're completely healed up because part of that healing process will include forgiving the person who offended you. So if you wait until you feel like it, you're never going to do it. So again, I'm going to leave you with this. I want everybody to look at me for a moment because I'm, the wheels are coming down. We're landing right now. Put up your tray. We're leaving. Of all the people groups 
in our world today. You and I, Christ followers, this people group, we should be quicker to forgive, quicker to understand, quicker to make it right than any other people group on the face of the earth. After all, we have received forgiveness that we have not earned and we do not deserve. And so the same forgiveness that someone else has not earned or deserved is the same forgiveness and the same grace that we are to pass on to them. And that's why Jesus said in the Lord's Prayer, Father, forgive me. Father, forgive me of my sins as I forgive those who sin against me. The forgiveness that I have received will be the forgiveness that I will share. The grace that I have received will be the same grace that I share with other people. So let's bury this stuff today. And if I had time today... The wheels were not down. <laughs> if we were just circling, I would tell you, it's time to bury some of this stuff and quit carrying this stuff with us. There's so many studies out there that are linked. All this junk that we carry in our backpack every day is linked to our physical health. We sleep less, we eat bad, and, and all this kind of stuff and, and, and we have anxiety, we, we have stress in our lives. It, it, it takes its toll on our heart, our vital organs in our life, and it's all tied to some of this stuff that we have been trapped in or tripped us up a long time ago. So if you want to be in better emotional, physical, and spiritual health this year, go make some past offenses right with other people. Thank you for joining us for this sermon today. If you made the decision to follow Christ, let us know in the comments below or at northwestchurch.tv. If God has encouraged you through this message, be sure to like or share this video with a friend. We'll see you next time.